years ago. And now I've been to the first first world social forum because this is not a world social forum. Not when 70% of the people from the global south who applied for visas were denied visas. Canada, I'm afraid, is not as seen on TV. Not everybody gets greeted at the airport by a shirtless Justin Trudeau. Oiled up like that guy from the Tonga in the Olympic opening ceremony. Yes, not as seen on TV. Apparently, the Canadian government was worried that the World Social Forum delegates would overstay their visas. Never mind that the, that the delegates applying for those visas from places like Mali and Palestine and Ecuador are the last people likely to overstay their visas and try to move to Canada. These are political leaders and community organizers of the first order intensely committed to changing their homelands. That commitment is what unites so many people who are here. The tourists from the US, on the other hand, these are the ones vowing to move to Canada if Donald Trump is elected. I keep my eye on them. I keep my eye on them. Now, I shouldn't joke about this because this is something that I actually know a little bit about. I was born in this city in 1970 because my father, a US citizen, did not want to be a soldier in the Vietnam War. Je suis née dans cette ville en 1970 parce que mon père, un citoyen des États-Unis, ne voulait pas être un soldat dans la guerre de Vietnam. Under Justin Trudeau's father, my parents were waved through the border and were free to stay and build their lives here. But Canada is not like that today. In fact, there are dozens of US soldiers and veterans who have fled to Canada over the past 12 years because they refused to fight an, in an in illegal war in Iraq. And here, they have faced deportation, legal harassment, and live in limbo, constantly afraid that they will be deported and jailed in the United States. It began under our last government, but nothing has changed so far for Iraq war resistors. And let me state the obvious. These men and women are heroes. They stood up to the most powerful military force on earth, refusing to be complicit in war crimes, refusing to fight a war for oil, which has a little to do with climate change, our topic tonight. These issues are all interconnected. 